In this movie we're going to look at cable bridges. Cable bridges are a new feature that was introduced with StarDraw Design 7.1. They're used in drawings, particularly block schematic drawings, to indicate where cables cross each other but don't intersect. So I'm going to begin by creating a couple of cables using cable presets. The first will be an audio cable, like so, and then we will add a power cable, like so. Now, these cables cross each other, but they don't intersect, and some people like to show this using a little hump or a cable bridge. And you can see by turning on cable bridges, these humps have been added to the cables automatically. And as I add new objects, I'm just going to copy these cables. You can see that new bridges are added automatically and instantaneously. Cable bridges are parameter driven and they are a document wide setting. So with cable bridging on, all of the appropriate cables will be bridged. You do not have individual control. You don't have to set individual cable bridge settings for any particular cables. It applies to the whole document. And the parameters are set here in the document properties grid in the cable bridging section. So let's run through what these parameters do. The first parameter is cable bridging enabled. This just shows whether cable bridging is on as it is with true or when set to false cable bridges are off. We then have a parameter called coalesce length. This defines the distance between cables that are being bridged at which point the bridge joins to the next bridge. So instead of having lots of little bridges we get one big one as is shown here. So the default coalescence length is 5 millimeters but if we change this, let's put it down to zero, this means that there is no coalescence and for each crossing we get an individual bridge. Some people like this, uh, some people feel as though it makes drawings look a little bit too busy and that's why we would have typically the default value of 5 mil, which is the same as two grid points in the standard block schematic module setup. We then have a diameter parameter and if we ch change this to let's say 1.25, you can see that those bridges are now half the size. The default value is 2.5, which is one grid point. We then have a direction. The default is horizontal, but we can change this to vertical. This means that the bridges are added to the vertical segment of your cable, rather than, as here, the horizontal segment of the crossing cables. We then have an orientation parameter. The default value is over, but we can also have bridges that go under. Bridges normally go over things, and that's why the default value is over. We then have a style parameter, so the crossing cables can either be represented by a bridge or by a gap. And again, this is based on the direction parameter, so in this case the gap is added to the horizontal segment, but we could change it to add the gap to the vertical segment as here. So let's take a look at how this works in a real drawing. This is a completed block schematic. We've got lots of cable action going on here and if we just turn cable bridging on you can see that bridges are applied in every instance and if we change those parameters, let's say change the direction from horizontal to vertical, again you can see that those changes are absolutely instantaneous and automatic. If we remove the coalescence you can see we're getting hundreds of bridges here and there is absolutely no impact on the speed or performance of Stardraw Design 7.1. So there we have a roundup of bridges, uh, a very popular and much requested feature. To remind you, bridges are automatic, they are document wide and they are controlled using the cable bridging parameters in the document properties sheet. Thank you very much for your time and we hope you enjoy using cable bridges.